let's go ahead and fire it up hey what's up youtube welcome to play it painted live hope you guys are having a good sunday evening yeah yeah guys yeah yeah here we go <laughs> with one of these i know it's uh it's been a it's been a little while here since we did a live stream and uh i'm gonna apologize for that it's been very very busy over on my side of the world here very busy with work so just uh hope everyone is doing well uh but we do tonight the good news is we do have something really cool to paint with you guys so uh so tonight we're painting brine and bones from malifo and we're working on these these three miniatures at the same time right now so i'm working on working on some uh this is the alternate uh, rogue necromancy i believe the kind of brine and bones rogue neck which is cool little fish man little fish man here how's it going <laughs> hope you're so here's here's what we're working on so far you can see archie here we're uh yeah having a lot of fun with these going a little slower than we uh than we typically go uh but there we go. But yeah, we're 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 doing the we're we're putting in the 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 extras for this because this is a really cool crew, um, and it's super fun to paint. So I want these to look really nice, so that when we get them on the board, they look great, and um, you know, and we can be proud of our work here. So so yeah. Anyways. Uh, so we're getting them ready. Don't worry. All of the we'll make sure all of those colors blend when they do. So we got Archie. We're working on the big base stuff. Here's uh, uh, Nani and the voice, and I added that Cthulhu statue, as you recall. So she's offering up the head here to the Cthulhu. Um, yeah. <laughs> more of like a tentacle face but he's funny he's eating uh he's got an ice cream cone in his hand it's super cool um but yeah yeah i hope you uh hope you enjoy where where we go with this set because it's super fun um the weird thing is i'm doing something a little different here is i'm working on my favorite sculpts and then kind of backwards which is typically what i don't do and that and what i um and what I usually don't recommend to people because you get demotivated towards the end of the uh, of the job. But in this case, I think it's really nice because you know these these miniatures um, should paint up pretty well and and look pretty good. So uh, so yeah, so we'll we'll back up and we'll work on these guys a little bit at a time here. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and start here on this Cthulhu eyes. I want the I want the Cthulhu eyes to kind of glow a little bit. So um, here's what we're gonna do. I want the I want the Cthulhu eyes to have a little bit of a green, like a greenish yellow glow to them. So we're gonna do this Necron type thing here. So these are the three that we're going to work on, and then I really haven't done much on the other, um, you know, on the other sculpts yet. But those guys will pretty much be the rest of this week, and then uh, and then for water effects, that's where things kind of slow down even more, <laughs> unfortunately, right? Because when you want to do water effects, it usually takes a little bit of time. So let's do that right there. Uh, and then for Archie here, I kind of want to get uh, want to get a good yellow highlight. Are you building anything or just chilling out? Oh man! Oh man! 
good yellow highlight here. This is pretty nice yellow. Yeah, thanks, Ron. I yeah, it's been uh, like I said, I'm traveling for business next week, so and I haven't you know in the evenings, I have not had that much time to tear away from my family and do a little bit of painting. I did tonight, however, while we were watching Godzilla movies. Wow. You're probably like their number one customer, man. The Crystal Fortress. I'm glad that's working out for you. Kind of expensive, uh, carrying solution but it does look amazing that's the good news all right so so I want to get some highlight here on Archie's hat a great I love his sculpt he's this is just a, such a great sculpt Archie is amazing lots of little freehand as you can see little stripes on the pants got some tattoos on these mini so you know we just want to give him give him the extra treatment and get them to look super cool when they go down. Um, actually, he should have a little bit. Now, Archie has, because he's a flesh construct, he should have a little bit of, uh, like, like a, a, a minor bloody tone. So we're going to do this thing. And if we can keep this subtle enough, it should look okay. What? My cat is really. But are you? You gotta stay if you're staying. You have to stay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, well, that's too red. All right. So we're actually going to take a little bit of this um, fresh blood, which is a cool little effect paint, and we're just going to ever we're just going to place it in specific spots here for Archie. Hold on, before I do that though, let me make sure that the skull on his hat is nicely done. Yeah. Yeah, the the Molly sculpt is really nice and the um the little diver guy for the narcoleptic machine. I know it's called necrotic machine, but we always called it the narcoleptic machine cuz that's funny. Work on those later in the week. And then it's just those rabble riser uh, skeleton guys. All right. So, a little bit of fresh blood here. Okay. And this is one of those instances where less is more, if you understand the phrase. Okay. All right, and here's what I mean by less is more. We're going to, I want that, I want you to be able to slightly detect a little bit of red down in here, All right? So I'm going to put some red there, right? Right where he was stitched up right there. 
and I'm going to put some red right here. He's got some red here across his face. All right. My cat is being a jerk. My cat is being a jerk. Okay, he's out. He's out. You're out, dude. You're out. Get out of here. That's not a good spot for you. Not a good spot for you. Nope. You know better than that. Ah. Alright. <laughs> trying to get my attention. Well, he got it. And the answer was, get out of my room, dude. All right. So, so you can see what this is doing. Right? That's too dark right there. Who has commitment issues? My cat. Oh, yeah. My cat. Always fighting for my attention. He doesn't, it's not that he has commitment issues. He just knows he comes in here and I don't pay attention to him. Sadly, I don't pay attention to a lot of people that come in here. <laughs> and they get mad and then they leave. So, you know, they do their song and dance. They try to, they try to get me to pay attention and then, you know... But we know when Daddy's in here and it's nighttime, he's working on stuff, right? That's that's how it works. That's how it works in this household. Okay. And this is kind of nice because, right? You can do this color blend in here, and you're not. It doesn't look out of the ordinary, all the different colors and stuff. Right? Yeah, who knows? My wife might fire back at me for not uh, sitting with them while we were watching the Godzilla movie. As I was sitting here getting a little painting done. Alright. Pretty nice. Right, I'm pretty getting pretty happy with that. It's looking it's looking pretty sharp. Mr. Archie there. We're almost at the point where we can start to incorporate all that stuff. Alright, and then we got this guy here. The Cthulhu. And it's looking pretty good. Let's uh mm. I need like a super bright yellow. Which Godzilla was today? Today was Godzilla Final Battle or something. Which I paid no attention to. Except when it was it was Godzilla and Anguirus versus uh, Gigan and King Ghidorah. So I think it was called Godzilla Final Battle. But you guys, you you Godzilla fans can correct me. There's a bunch of, you know, and you, you don't really, when you watch Godzilla movies, you never really pay attention when it's just human stuff going on, right? Because who gives a shit about the human stuff? No one, you're not, you don't go to Godzilla and go, oh, I can't wait, want to see what happens to this character. You just want to see the monsters fighting. Right? At least that's how I always treated it. I want to see the monsters fighting. <laughs> Alright. Okay. And then... And then... Um, now I want a little bit... I want a little tiny little bit of OSL. Just a tiny bit. Not too much. I don't want to overdo the OSL. Final Wars. Yeah, you're right. Godzilla Final Wars. Yes. That's, that's what this is. Alright. So... We're going to take, we're actually going to do a little tiny little overbrush here of Warp Lightning.
my son is, but he's he's taking us through all the Godzilla stuff at the moment, so we're watching a lot of it. All right. I don't know if this is the right color or if it should even be lighter than this. Let's let's try it. Let's just see how. Oh no, that's not bad. Okay, because I could do. I could do ethermatic blue if this was not working, but this looks okay, right? If I do this around the eye area, it gives the eye a tiny little glow effect to it. I'll do that right there. So this is a really, really minor OSL, right? You can barely, you can't even really tell. It's not like it's projecting all the way across to her body. It's just on the Cthulhu here, right? I even use some of it down here. Okay, there we go. All right, pretty good. I like this as just a little, just a little diorama, a little diorama rama. And this is so far, she is my favorite sculpt in this set. Now, the the way she was painted was she's all like stitched up and that kind of thing. I mean, I could do that, but I frankly just like this. I don't know. I like this nice clean look. She does have a little anchor tattoo there on her thigh. I don't know. I, I'm happy with this, but Nelson, if you like the, st the stitched up look, I can add the stitching and stuff to her. But I, I really just kind of like her like this, like super clean looking. <clears throat> okay. So... Let's go back over to this guy. Hey, what's up, Sean? Let's go and let's uh, let's start blending all of this together, okay? And this is where you would normally go navy, navy gray. Um, I may go a little bit darker. Well, well, maybe we do more navy gray, just to be safe. Navy gray. Well, the ash black would actually look better. Are you like a tattoo? Cool. Let's go ash black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go darker. Oh, Starship Filth is good. Actually, Starship Filth is better. It's a better compromise. All right. So, fish face here with the cool glowing um, lure. Now I'm going to do this and let it shade the pants because I want that I want that blue gray to look a little bit darker, and I want it to retain a little bit of shading. There we go. There we go. So now we're now we've got that darker look to the stripy pirate pants that they all they all went to the same store and bought the uh, the stripy pirate pants. And then 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 I'm going to use it here to blend all of this together, right? Because I don't even though I want I want the boards to be different colors and why I still want them to kind of ultimately blend into like a like a weathered beat up dock right so that's pretty good okay and then that's going to be countered by the blue of the water right once this is all once this is all buttoned up which is going to be a while because we got to get the blue down there yeah, see they all 
They all went to the same store. <laughs> they love that style. They love that style of the of the pirate pants, right? So you can see it starts off real dark, then you just keep moving it. And what's nice is it'll keep that same pattern that was on there, um, but it'll it'll it's going to make it look much more subtle. And then it's also it's also going to bring back a lot of the like details of the folds and the rips of the pants, right? So that's a nice that is a nice way to bring all of that back instead of the stark the strike uh, sorry the stark blue versus black. Now you've got all that coming back, right? Archie is awesome. I love him and his hat. Blue or Navy Gap. This is, they went to Zombie Gap. Zombie, Zombie Pirate Gap. There you go. So now, now it doesn't look, it does, the, the dock doesn't look as striking. Now it looks like just old, like, shiplap right like beat up beat up wood is what we were going for there and you can see you got you got good little colors going on underneath it all right and then our our lady here i'm actually gonna use a little bit on the bandana just to get some shade back in the bandana And you notice it didn't it didn't take the red away, it just hit the There we go. So it's a nice way to kind of get that the dark theme of everything back get your get your shading back in right so now everyone knows she kinda means business All right. Yeah, this this model is fantastic. It's the simplest sculpt in the set, and it's a it's my favorite sculpt. Just let's let's just make it look like she's offering up a sacrifice here to Cthulhu. And then we'll get a little bit of shade on Cthulhu as well, right? There we go. That's kind of nice. All right. So, these guys are looking pretty good. Um, so now let's, let's continue to work on their, uh, let's work on their, their ocean, their ocean bases here. There's a specific color I'm looking for. Let's see if it shows up. So you excited for your models for Octave? I don't understand. 
I don't understand you, my guy. All right. So I want I want kind of like a deeper blue green here towards the outside of the bases, right? And I can go in with Archelian green, but it's too. It's just ever slow, ever so deep, and it's not going to blend as well unless I cut it. So I'm going to put some down, and I'm going to cut it in half with a little bit of contrast medium. Right? Because I just want, I want a little bit of dark out there. Right? Almost as if the water is just getting deeper. Okay. So if you're just joining us, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Hope you're having a good Sunday evening. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. And what you guys are looking at right now are some of the brine and bones set for Malifaux. Alright. So, I'm going to do this. I really want that to be out this way, right? I want that. Because when we do the when we do uh, the water effect, you're going to want this to there. See how that's we're going to blend that a little bit. Oh, am I excited for English Ivan? Hell yeah, I'm excited for English Ivan. <laughs> I've been wanting to play English Ivan, and I don't know. Today we were talking about good duos. And Bing was like, I have Masaki. And I don't know who said it, but somebody was like, Oh, well, you know, Masaki and English Ivan both use shadow markers. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And I went over there and bought an English Ivan set. So I'm hoping uh, I will be able to... Um, now, I'm not going to rush this set, but it it still looks like, with the amount of time I put in, it still looks like I should be able to work on English Ivan mid to late this week, right? So if I work on it mid to late this week, then, uh, and it's super easy to paint English Ivan, because it's just shadow stuff, right? It's nothing, nothing groundbreaking there. Yeah. And we were like, wow, that is actually super good synergy, right? If it's... Okay. Oh, I'm just jealous of his Neapolitan ice cream. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> He's so cool. Love Archie. It's the best. Love Archie. Okay. Let's give this a second to dry. I'm going to show you guys, like, I'm really have not gone very far on the other pieces. Um, but there's still five pieces left in this. And, right, so the three, um, the three skeleton things are going to be most likely painted as a batch because they are very similar, right? So these three... We can paint as a batch. As you can see, I started the skeleton parts, the bones, but really not much else on these. I guess what I can do, since um, since I already have that Archelian green, is I might as well do the blend on these. Right? This thing is cool, the totem. It's cool. I couldn't get this harpoon thing to line up, and I'm not sure why. It just doesn't. 
because that harpoon's supposed to go straight out this way. But the way it attached, it did not. So I don't know. Maybe I have to cut it down a little bit more or something. But this thing is awesome. And you got the bone boys, right? And they're pretty simple, honestly. There's, you know, we could do a little stripey stripes on the pants, but that's about it. There's not much to do on them. And then, uh, and then you got Molly here. He's pretty cool. You can see, I don't know if, it probably looks too washed out on camera, but I do have her, like, gray zombie skin in and purple lips. So, so yeah, she's, she's going to be the, the last one done because, obviously, she's super cool. Um, but once those three are done, then I'll start to work on the three rabble risers. So these three will get done around all around the same time. But anyways, while we are waiting for stuff to dry there, let's just do this, right? So all I'm doing, right, is you just run right around the outside here. And then you, then you dampen your brush and just kind of soften up that edge. Right. There you go. Let me soften that up. That one that I just put away, that rabble riser sucked to put together. <laughs> the one with the crossed swords. Because it it the way her legs attach underneath underneath the tabard is really weird. So her her pose is probably not a hundred percent accurate. Oh. You liked it? Oh wow, you like this better than the witch set? It's a great set, it really is. So we're just going to paint in our, our little ocean edges here. Because what's going to happen is we're going to fill this with a little bit of water effect. And then after the model is like 100% done, we come back in and add a little bit of gloss wet look to this, to the base. Right? There we go. In totally unrelated news, I started the captain a little earlier, and then I just don't care enough to finish it. It's like, Bruh. I don't know. I know the internet's like, oh, that's what you take as your beater. Take the captain. I was like, where? You take the captain? I don't know. All right. Anyway, so all this wash is still drying down. Let's go ahead and get, let's get a little of that chop. I mean, I'll finish the captain. It's just compared to finishing this set, and then English Ivan, he's going to be sitting on my desk for a while. He might be that piece that I just paint while other stuff is drying, if that makes sense. I just don't care about the captain. <laughs> I do not care about the captain. No flurry. No onslaught trigger. 346 damage, yeah, it's pretty nice, but... 
it's not the hardest thing in the world to find, you know, a high strength beater. I don't even, I mean, with the, with the Haka guy coming out, you already have a min three guy in Colette. So who cares? Right? All white down there. Right? There we go. Make it choppy. Make it choppy. You just recently had to put exploding pigs together. It's not the small parts. It's, there was, it was, um, here, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you what it was on her. Why, sh why that one was so weird. Right now, let me just get, there we go. But you can see how that water effect is going to look when, think about that, like super deeper and glossier. It's going to be cool. So here's the model, right? And if you look here, you've got a leg walking forward and we've got a leg walking back. And these legs attach to these little flat pieces. And the flat pieces are supposed to sit together up against the back of this cloak. And then you're supposed to glue this tabard in front to lock it down. The problem is they were not cut properly. And then they go into these boots and you've got to line up the boots there too. So it was, it was odd. It was very odd putting this together. And you can see the legs are a kind of, they're kind of at an odd angle. But that it, she is supposed to be kind of walking forward with her swords crossed like that. You know, which I just hopefully she doesn't fall apart or do anything weird. I don't think she will because it was all plastic cement. Um, was how we put her together. So I think we should be okay there. I mean, this is looking pretty good. Let's, uh, I guess we can start putting some water. Like, so with water effects, you got to put the first effect down and then let it dry 24 hours and then do it again. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jason? So here's the... The part that sucks, right? If you want, if you want to do a decent water effect on your base, you have to be super patient with this. Okay, this is not a water effect. This is wet effect. Okay, so you don't want to do this. I'm actually trying to build layers. This you would do on the docks at the end, if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna put that away. And see, try to locate my water effects. Mm. I didn't stick my water effect on my fancy spinner thing because it's not very often. I just don't, I don't do the water effect very often. But I do have water effect. Just gotta find it. It's the trick. Where did I put my water effect? Um. It's just so rare that I do it, that I cannot find it. It was like a flat twist cap, right? He's here. Hold on. Hey, what's up, Placebo Pete? What's going on, man? Trying to get you to come out August 7th, sir. 
come play some Malifo with us. Come play, come play our casual team event, and you'll and you'll learn how to play with a teammate. Right? Hell, I'll be on your team. If it's uneven, you then you'll get you'll get so much Malifo knowledge from me. <laughs> Or not. Okay, this is upsetting. Where is that? It's on this desk. I'm I'm gonna find it. It's gonna make me angry. It's here. You'll see. That's thinner. That's thinner. That's the style of bottle it was in. Hold on, buddy. What's that? Is that water? No. Hmm. You don't want to kill your head with all those rules? Who cares? Throw, just show up and I'll just tell you when to flip a card. <laughs> and just move your piece around. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's a great plan. I don't see any problems with that. I do see problems with my inability to find my water thing. You know the worst part about it is? I know I have multiple, I, I own a multiple water effect things. And this is really not okay. Because it's supposed to be here. Maybe this is the Maybe the rest of the feed is listening to me fump, rifle through my shit and try to find it. It's here, folks. We will find it. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't throw it out. There's no... I know I never use it, but I wouldn't be like, oh... I don't need this and just toss it. Okay, so it's not in. Oh, maybe. Maybe I stuck it in the, the bottom one? Maybe. Oh! This looks very promising. Okay. Maybe it's in here. So all my cool oil paints are in here. That's not it. But the these bottles, these are the right style bottles. So I'm very close. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Found it! Take that, universe! Ooh, and I found this cool Steinol res. That's a cool color. And a Bane model, for some reason. You know, th these are all W's. We're counting them all as W's. Ooh, there's all kinds of cool shit down here. I should go down to that drawer more often. All right. Okay. I know you can't read what's on here, but it says still water. <laughs> okay. This is the thing. So if you want to do this, and you want to do it right, and not get weird cloudy water. Oh, come on, you. 
This is the, the weird child proof caps where they where you can't open it unless you here we go. That was a solid three minutes. It was, man. Okay. Ooh. Did it. Hold on. Did the resin settle out? A bunch of the resin settled out. This may not be good anymore. Let me see if I can get it to incorporate. That is how old this is. Oh, it looks like it is, it is incorporating again. When this stuff works, it's actually pretty nice. Come on, you. Come on, I believe in you. Really need to put this in like a, a paint shaker, right? Oh, uh, uh, here, let me show you what this looks like. See that? I got to incorporate all that back in. Otherwise, I'm just putting water down. And when I say water, I mean literally just the vehicle and not the water effect. <laughs> He's realized the totem's holding an anchor. Yes, sir. And one of the things I want to do on the totem that's a little bit different than the studio art is he should really be wearing a copper helmet because that's a diving suit. Right? It wouldn't. He, it should really be a copper helmet. Oh, it's making really gross sounds. <laughs> All right. Come on. I know, she may be dead, Jim. She may be dead. Not having the best luck incorporating this. Right. All I was able to do was turn it into a really cool thing that looks like a like a piece of gum. Yeah. Well, you could go brass, right? Brass, you get what I'm saying, though. It should be that color. Oh, that is actually... Oh, yeah, yo. It's just, it's too, I can't get it to incorporate. All right, plan B. So plan B is going to be, we, we are going to use that wet effect, but we're just going to apply it in thinner layers and just let it build, right? The good news is this is so shallow. I'm just going to have to throw this water effect out. Well, what you could do is, what I could do is brass and then highlight it copper, but what I really want to do is copper and then highlight, then give it a little bit of that green um, patina on it. 
that's what I what I want to do there. So we'll see. Um, okay, so we are back at that wet effect. Let's see if Mig can save us where Vallejo has let us down. Do I want? Do I want to go an even deeper blue? Right? Maybe take an ink? Should I go even deeper? Or would that look too cartoony if it's really blue? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, this is just shore water, so it probably would never get that blue. Well, let's do this. Let's give it the wet effect. The wet look. Oh, is this solvent? What is this? Ooh, what is a solvent? Uh, I think I may need to varnish this first then. Because I don't want this wrecking. I think I have to... Oh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We got to varnish these models first. So we'll hit them with a satin varnish first, and then we'll build it up. Sound good? Okay, glad everyone is in agreement. Uh, let's do that. Mhm. Mm which is why I did, which is why I did that darker blue ring on the outside, because like getting further away from the, the docks, then it would be deeper. But if I go too, if that is too pronounced, then it might look a little weird. All right. So we're going to use the great equalizer. And this fish guy here, actually, once the varnish does dry, I actually am going to paint his body a little bit with that wet look because he should be slimy looking, right? So let's do a little airbrush thinner. First diving suits event. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Those diving suits are terrifying. And it's all, you know, it's all metal. It's you're you're in this giant metal helmet thing. All right. So you'll see the sheen kind of even out from this, which is good, except it's not good for the water, right? In fact, somebody uh, somebody at Comic Quest asked me this today or yesterday. I don't remember. I think Kenny was asking me. He's like, how do you how do you keep your if you're trying to keep something glossy and you seal it, how do you keep it glossy? And I said, well, the answer is you seal it and then come back and hit it hit those spots with your gloss varnish or whatever. Okay. So This thing is kind of my favorite thing. <laughs> Just reminds me of Merman. He's so cool. All right. I really want to get that varnish down in there to protect that part. 
yeah, we're going to protect that part while the rest of this while we we do the wet look stuff. Maybe I should go look in that drawer and see if there is another water. Because I thought I had two water effect bottles, but maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? The good news is, once these are done, English Ivan is going to paint up stupidly fast. <laughs> Because there isn't much to do on those, on that set. Chris is right, though. I am, at some point, if I actually want to rock English Ivan, I do need to go back and buy the Umbra keyword stuff. I mean, do I? <laughs> Maybe. All right, that stuff's drying. Let's look at some Malifaux stuff. Let's look at let's look at rules. All right, let's look at. I was looking at Archie. <laughs> so I would need. So the syndicate models are kind of cool. This guy is is, whoops, this guy's pretty cool. He's got um, a decent uh, defensive tech, good stats across the board, right? Six six six. That's pretty nice. Uh, like that's a that's a nice stat on his melee, but range zero. That kind of blows. But you gain staggered with the two, three, four damage and a uh, trigger on every suit. Pretty sweet. Like this is a decent. And then you have stat six against willpower. Reveal the target's control hand. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Gibson's pretty cool. He has tools for the job, which is nice. He gets shielded. Um, and then he can he can actually use distracted um, to against the model while he's attacking the model, which is super nice. And then he makes a concealing shadow marker, which is kind of nice. Right, so he was kind of in contention. I was like, okay, maybe I run... English Ivan and Gibson, but personally, I want to run Ava because she's super cool and she's only seven cost, which is nice. Um, I could even stick a upgrade on her because I'm trying to figure out does English Ivan need much for soul stones um, since he can kind of just remove damage with shadow markers and with Masaki as a teammate, I'm going to have a lot of shadow markers. So, um, so right, does she act, does, do I actually need three soul stones? But anyways, she's got my favorite ability, Don't Mind Me, which is awesome. Uh, the flexible morality is a, a, a nice trait, right? You got to discard a card, uh, to not suffer a negative when attacking the model. So, right, it's kind of like poor man's manipulative. Uh, and then... Uh, and then that scoundrel ability is nice. You could look at the player's uh, fate deck and place them back in any order. Um, but here's what's nice, right? So she's got Secret Passage, which is awesome. It does cost you an 8 to get it, but um, that's going to make her super nice as a scheme runner. I still love this ability, Lock Away, because it, it uh, it, it'll turn like a Shadow Marker or a Scheme Marker into kind of a safe zone um and then uh and then you've got this 
Derringer, and she tur she turns uh, Friendly Fire into a plus, so that's super nice. And then that coordinated attack trigger means she so she should be firing into into melee um, to try to trigger that person to attack, right? Yeah, tools for the job is very very good. I just I think what I like to do. I think she. I think Ava has a better toolkit for what how how I actually want to run um, the doubles crew. So pretty sweet. All right, and then here's the totem. Pretty cool totem. Um, operatives are just kind of cool. I don't know. I'm one, what I'm trying to decide is, do I do I place play an operative? Uh, there's also wait. Now I gotta skip back. I gotta skip down to the Umbra keyword. All right. So you get you get three of these uh, devas in the starter set. Sorry for the reflection there. Hold on. I got a better way of doing this. I got a better way of doing this. Sorry, guys. While we wait for stuff. All right. So we just want to do... Oops. So we're just going to do my phone screen. Okay. So let's do this. And let's add. Mm hmm. <laughs> Did that work? I don't think that worked. No, it didn't work. Hold on. Let's remove that. Let's add window. There we go. Okay. So you guys see my phone now, right? Let's blow this up. Okay. All right. So let's look at some Umbra keyword. Actually, you know what we should do? Let's just build a crew. You guys can help me build a crew. Let's just do that, right? So let's build a 50 soulstone crew. All right, and uh, so I do agree that we want to have Gibson in the main crew, and we definitely want to have Ava uh, and at least one Deva, right? So that's, well, let's do this. Let's start with the starter crew. Whoops. Let's add all three. And then let's look at the Deva. Seven cost minion. That's kind of rough, but you can see the stats are pretty good. Stat six, a little slow on the walk there. But always counts as concealing terrain, which is nice for English. To move around um, the clingy ability is really really nice so that it can just stick with people that are trying to leave it um, the latch on ability one of my favorite abilities in the game and I think only 
uh, steampunk arachnids had them prior to Davis coming out. Uh, and then made to kill. Uh, after this model is placed, it may, may, it may take a melee action. So pretty cool. Um, so zero range, uh, zero range stat five, uh, melee attack. I like the lingering shadow. You get another shadow marker out of it. And then you can do plus one damage and stagger it off for their other. Uh, you can also heal off shadow markers, which is which is decent. You just heal two. Um, and then Mimic is kind of... Now, this is kind of expensive, right? Because it's your... Um, okay, so Mimic replaces um, a non... Uh, it replaces a uh, non-upgrades or uh, non-master uh, action... Uh, as though it was printed on the card. So it costs you f your free action to copy another action. So it costs you your free action, but you get, uh, you get, you know, somebody's melee attack or somebody's, um, you know, somebody's ability it could even be a tactical action. Uh, that's pretty nice. I don't know. I know that that, that seems to be um, one of the better abilities for a Deva. So I don't think you need to run three of these, right? I think you really only need to run one of these. Which one looks the best? They're all pretty cool looking. They're all pretty cool looking. I like the first one, though. It looks like more Nosferatu looking. So, so that it means let's chuck these two, right? And let's hire... Um, you got Broken Spectre. These are kind of cool. Um, so nice stats, 6-5, but then again, 4 movement, so kind of slow. Also counts as Concealing Terrain. Uh, you got a Defensive Willpower trigger off of, uh, off of Masks to hand out Distracted, which is nice. Terrifying 11, hey, that's not bad for a minion. Uh, it's an 8 cost minion, but not terrible. Uh, and then the removal of healing, that's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. Um, okay. Death touch stat six against defense, two, three, four, irreducible damage. That's pretty nice. Take that armor. So that's a good one. Um, and then you have a... Place the target anywhere within four inches of its current position in concealing terrain. That's pretty nice. Uh, free action envelop and shadow. Okay, so that's it's a pseudo ranged attack based on the amount of shadow markers around. Kind of nice. That's kind of nice. With an on your heels trigger. And then tactical action. Six inch pulse. Target 12, move, duel, or push 3 inches away from this model. Any enemy models in base contact with this model suffer 2 damage. And you can add a stagger trigger. Okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. I don't know if I want to hire one of those yet. You're saying a Nocturne. A Nocturne. These, <laughs> These are kind of cool. Shadow, shadow beasties. Uh, defense six, kind of nice. The willpower sucks. Movement six, always one of my favorite things. In size one. Whoop. Dusk hunter, targeting a model within two inches of a friendly shadow marker. This model's attack actions receive a plus. Really nice and unimpeded. Snapping jaws, one three four damage. With the rake, the eyes. <sighs> okay. That's not bad. A little, a little hand manipulation there. Um, and then this place here, this is a resist with movement. 
Move the target up to three if the target is in concealing terrain. This model may have the target gain distracted plus one. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And it has another trigger to drop another shadow marker. Right? Don't forget you can this can be used on a friendly for a three inch push or th sorry three inch move and some cases you do want to give the model distracted right because it's like giving uh it would it would it's like giving ivan focused or you know any of the ungentlemanly characters it's it's you want to give them that um so that they get the uh they get the bonus that's a that's a pretty nice five point model except for the the willpower three that kind of sucks um and the one three four damage is not bad off of a plus you get the plus flip if you're within two inches of concealing terrain it's not bad okay um and oh and then you got uh, let's skip the versatile for now. You were saying operative. Yeah, he's got some nice just five point minions. And yeah, and the ungentlemanly affairs is nice. So again, just encouraging you to fire into combat. And then the arson ability, which is um, ar the arson ability, exists uh, on um, saboteurs for the Arcanist faction. Uh, I'm a big fan of that ability. Uh, it's a little situational, but I've it. You can win games with it, right? Just because you're removing somebody else's scheme marker um, with it, you know, from ten inches away. That's pretty nice. And guess what? You can also, off of a crow, you can also add another shadow marker. So I think, I think the, uh, with a, with a nice little three inch push. Or sorry, three inch. Uh, so, so yes, we'll add an operative. And we'll add a Nocturne. And I still have 18 Soul Stones left. <laughs> wow. Maybe two operatives. Are the models cool looking? Yeah, let's do two. Why not? Yeah, let's let's do two operatives. So I definitely need to buy the box with the operatives, and then a box with the Nocturnes. Still 13 soul stones left. Holy crud! I could add good old Jesse Halliday. I could. It, we could have Jess, Jesse Halliday could be a part of. <laughs> Aw, Jesse. Aw. <laughs> uh, you know what? Just because people think she's trash, hiring her. Just in. There. You'll see. <laughs> Jesse Halliday in the crew. There we go. Always the late. That's right. I, have, I now have like four ladies in this crew and some monster looking things. And I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, let's add. I can add. Uh, let's add it. Let's add a flush with cash is kind of nice. Flush with cash is kind of nice. And it doesn't matter. 
you could stick this on anybody. Uh, it's that's kind of nice. I don't know. Maybe I put that on Ava. Uh, that's kind of I'm um, okay. Let's see. Let's get what else we got here. Uh, after mm, double cross, oh, you can cheat face with the card face down. That's not the first time that exists in Malfo. That's a thing. And then that's that's a decent one. I think flush with cash is super nice though. Deadly Pursuit. Mm, that's not as good. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it's a minion, you get the... You can draw up the three of... But it's, it's nice. Maybe we add that to... Maybe we add that to Operative 1. Although I just think it's the defensive ability is better for Ava, personally, because Ava with "Don't Mind Me," it's just it's I think it's better. I know the three cards is super nice, but that's only once per game. Let's try it this way. There, and then I don't I don't know if that's okay to just run them with four soul stones, but I tend to start there. When I'm building crews anyways, is I try to, I start at four soul stones and then see, go up or down. I mean, <laughs> can always trade in Jesse Halliday for a model that works. <laughs> burn, burn Jesse. <laughs> hey, she's, she's got feelings too. They can't all be tense, guys. You can't. <laughs> So, okay. So now I do have to go. So, at the very least, I need to go back to Comic Quest and buy the set that has operatives. <laughs> if I want to run this. In the meantime, and I don't have a Nocturne. So, I'm going to have to... Um, so, I would either... Maybe I do a second Deva in there. Or, uh, or I put the Alpinist in. Because I, I have an Alpinist. She's a 10 to me. <laughs> Where is my... Did I... I never finished my Ava. Where is she? Or sorry, Jessie. My Jessie Halliday. She's here. Come on out, Jessie. <laughs> there she is. She's been like this for months. She hasn't, right? She's just waiting for me to do something. <laughs> Nelson's has been done. This model's been here for I don't know how long. This model was has been here since uh, um, since basically since we started the Wednesday night watch party. <laughs> Aw, Jesse. Aww. <laughs> Every Ivan crew has a botanist. Botanist? A botanist? That's a versatile. Let's see what's what's so nice about the botanist. It's alright. It looks okay. This 
discard up to two grow tokens this action drops an additional number of shockwave markers well that's kind of nice and that's for a six card just to force a million checks and then anytime you do have um a, uh, a walk action that's basically nimble but you have to buy it for a six Uh, scrap a corpse marker. Oh, this model gains plus one to its stats for each grow token on it. What? That's kind of nice. Can't be moved by enemy effects and is unaffected by severe terrain. And it heals one if it is in severe terrain. After this model makes a successful... Melee action generated by, the, by an enemy model's disengage action. This model may resolve the action's normal effects. That's pretty nice. Wicked is, they brought Wicked back. That's a very old ability. Yeah, but it's, it's to a maximum of plus two. But that still means defense seven. <laughs> That's amazing. But I don't know. Who cares? I... If the model looks cool, I'll think about it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Wow, it's already 10. Okay. So you can see, now it's starting to dry. Oh, hold on. We got to turn that off. Now it's starting to dry. You can see it's starting to flatten out a little bit. And now we're going to add. Now we do the wet look thing. What did I do with it? Look at that. Super nice. I like the... Can I keep the bubbles? Actually, you can't even tell the bubbles here. That's kind of nice. Okay. Good thing I am. Um, varnished that first. Right. I want that to go all the way there. And I should have been, I'm going to need to use white spirits to clean up my brush for that. Because that wasn't so smart. <laughs> Oops. Luckily I used a junk brush to do that. All right. Okay, there's a lady botanist. Okay, count me in. <laughs> That's actually pretty nice. It's going to take a year for that to dry, but what do you think? I think it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. All right, and yeah, we'll just let that. Let these dry and then do our black victory lap. And then I have, to, oh, I do have to seal them again. But I think what I can do is just seal the bottom part and not get too much on the water, and we should be okay. I can even put some of the wet look on this guy's body just to keep it slimy looking. So, okay, cool. Well, it is, uh, that's pretty much all we're going to do tonight. Sadness. Paint me. Please. Please let me be in your crew. Please. <laughs> <laughs> P 
Please let me be in English Ivan's crew. What are you gonna? What is she gonna do? What is she gonna do? She's a she's a seven soul stone. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna. F you know. Jason spent all that time figuring out. Uh, how to get Mei Feng a little bit better. We could we could figure out Jesse Halliday. <laughs> I mean, her stats are average. Evasive is a nice ability, I guess. Hard to kill, sure, that's nice. If it's within a Kendra card, no one cares. So the harpoon gun is not bad, but unlike the rest of the crew, you do not ignore friendly fire. All right, Soulstone Flare is not the worst thing in the world, uh, but it's your only free action, and it requires a seven, and it's okay. So in other words, she has no, with her walk five, she has, and she really has no way of getting any faster on her own. And then you have the, I mean, she just does a bunch of stuff with markers. She has, other than hard to kill and evasive, she didn't really have defensive tech, so... You just kill her. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm putting her in my crew until, I don't know, she'll walk around, she'll walk and focus. That's, that's what she's going to do for like two turns. And then you guys are going to be like, oh, free kill. And then kill her. <laughs> I'll give her flush with cash. There, and she can just throw a soul stone. Now you can't kill Jesse, but you get a soul stone. <laughs> right? You can't all be tens. And she is clearly a seven, according to her cost. I. Eh. Seven Soulstone henchmen henchmen are kind of bad though. They just you look at the stat jump from her to most eight and nine Soulstone henchmen, and and there's it's a pretty big deal. Though that's one of the things about Malifa that I noticed is that, that there there is kind of a sweet spot for things, right? Minions that cost around you know in in the the five to six Soulstone area, you can get a good bargain out of those you can usually be like oh wow that's a good like that's a really good six soul stone minion or that's a really good five soul stone minion it's not a pure it's not a, a, a true one-to-one -one scale is what i'm saying um you want for the most part your henchmen you know if they're if they're eight or nine cost it's pretty good if they're a 10 cost henchman then i start getting skeptical right maybe it's overbuilt maybe it doesn't need you know all that stuff um Joss is uh, a nine soul stone henchman, and you get a little concerned about stuff like that. Eight soul stone henchman, pretty good. Um, the captain is a ten soul stone versatile henchman. I'm like, why? It's not that great. Um, so you see what I'm saying? There's like, there's kind of, there are kind of value points built into, uh, into the type of model it is. So. <laughs> oh, looks but does nothing. <laughs> this <laughs> we hit a sore spot with Jesse Halliday. <laughs> so if I put Jesse Halliday on the board, Nelson might go after her in the worst way, which is probably good for the rest of the crew, 
right? <laughs> that means the models that can actually do things will probably do things, and she's gonna... Wait, is, is her stupid free action... Oh, at least it's not a gun. Um, can I also point out she doesn't have a melee attack? <laughs> she doesn't have a melee attack! She doesn't have a melee attack. Okay? That's... So she's a dove. In other words. <laughs> I mean... Candy doesn't have a melee attack, but Candy has your melee attack. <laughs> okay? She doesn't have... What, is, what does Jessie have? She doesn't... Guys, she doesn't have a melee attack. Wh why? Why do they hate her so much? <laughs> maybe... You know what, Nelson? Maybe, maybe this is based on your ex... And your ex, like, ran into one of the Malifaux devs. <laughs> they decided, you know what? <laughs> and they made not a 10. Where you just... <laughs> she's... That's it. Queen. She's gonna end up on my team. For sure. <laughs> She does. She doesn't have a melee. She's holding a crystal thing. She can't punch you in the face with the crystal thing. <laughs> Why did she suck so bad? Who does she think she is? Like, I'm the next Bo-Katan. What do you think? <laughs> I. What? Okay. I'll. I'll finish painting her. When I paint the Ivan set, because there's really not much left to do. You just she have that she has that stupid brown and gray outfit. It's really bad. Like oh, I'm I'm an adventurer. I have some brown. I have brown overalls. It's pretty bad. But he, okay, it's I, I'm done clowning Jesse. She can I just repeat that she still does not have a melee. What does this model do? Honestly, honestly. I mean, Soulstone Flare, you know what Soulstone Flare is good for? Um, because uh, there's a lot of, like, constructs that tend to have low willpower. And if you're trying to use, like, uh, if you're trying to use a hunter or something like that to drop off a scheme marker or interact, um, that could wreck them. But, oh, man. What do you actually do? Do with her. Tar target a marker. Drop a scrap marker into base contact with the target. Then remove the target. She can tick tock. <laughs> she does this and she she does a dance and then she touches the screen and she, suddenly she's cosplay something else, right? Range 6 marker remover. True, but did we just not see that operatives have the arson ability, which is way better? <laughs> which is a 10-inch marker remover? <clears throat> um, so, maybe I, if I take her gun off and change that into a knife, she could be an operative. <laughs> Guess what? The operative has a melee attack. I know it's only stat 4, but it's a melee attack. <laughs> Jesse, what? What? Okay. I, I said I would stop clowning Jesse, but... <sighs> I, what? 
What? Okay. I'm going to go to bed. That's it. I'm, there's nothing else to say about Jesse here. That said, these things are pretty... Oh, hold on. Right? That's... She's cool. In other news, she's cool. Um, here's a question. Is Mei Feng worse because she's a master and costs more, or poor Jesse? No, I mean, Mei Feng, she's not... Mei Feng, actually, in my opinion, isn't bad. She's just in the world of masters that have these crazy overpowered type abilities. She's the, she's the least impressive. If that makes sense. She's not bad. Mei Feng isn't bad. She, Mei Feng is playable, in my opinion. You can play I just... Every time I've played Mei Feng, I have just not been impressed with her. Um, and that's kind of the, like, the trick of Malifaux, is that everything... It's because they don't balance on that... On that... Within that scope of the game. And here's what I'm... Here's what I mean. Right? So, they build all of this power into masters and keywords ability to like manipulate cards, win duels, um, speed across the board, uh, you know, do massive amounts of damage and all that kind of stuff. But they don't but the, they don't necessarily balance in that area. Right? They balance the a lot of the balancing happens in gaining grounds. A lot of the balancing for the game happens on the strats and scheme side of things. So it's like, yeah, okay, you could totally take advantage of this particular game mechanic all you want, but ultimately your crew still needs to be able to a achieve this common um, set of strategies and schemes. And that's that's really where a lot of the actual balance of the game occurs. So Mei Feng is not bad at the fundamental part of the game. She just doesn't have that top heavy like she doesn't have that top heavy presence the way other keywords do okay ride the rails is in theory sounds it sounds really cool because it's like an up to a 12 inch move but when you understand that fundamentally it's kind of a lateral move it it is at best case scenario when you're throwing things upfield you are still projecting the hell out of what you're about to do so your opponent can easily adjust knowing, oh, well, there's where the rail is going to be, right? So that mechanic is not, compared to other keyword mechanics, it just, in my opinion, it's just not there. It's just not, um, uh, it, it, it just doesn't impress in that side of the game where most other keywords do so right but i mean jesse halliday may actually be bad <laughs> jesse halliday may be i mean who i don't know fitzsimmons like who are like some of the worst henchmen in the game fitzsimmons might be the worst henchman in the game but Je i don't know jesse halliday kind of up there for here put it back up hold on save this crew right if we go to Fitzsimmons I mean he's even he's an 8 cost his stats are no better than um, Jesse's uh, solidarity, solidarity is actually a really nice aura. Um, right, good. Just has three auras up out of the gate. Putting up three auras, reducing um, damage, uh, you know, giving negative damage flips, and then plus defense. Right, has the arson ability. Again, that's superior to her ability. Um, has a melee attack. <laughs> Interrogate's kind of a stupid ability, but whatever. Um, 
here's another you can drop a scheme marker in base contact with the target so there we go that's a nice um, there you go you want to detonate charges there's your detonate charges right there right you just put on you know you you create a scheme marker within two and then you just do the I didn't start the fire guess what it's just an eight it does it just flat out happens so even Fitzsimmons better than Jesse Alliday. <laughs> the model is kind of dumb but yeah anyways we can't all be tens that's the that's the lesson for tonight <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to call it here so I can go to bed. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good night, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one.